Hello and welcome. Thanks for organizers for making such a great event here in Finland. I'm very happy to be here. Um, we in Nordic countries, uh, we are used to overnight successes. Like it only took Nokia 130 years to become the world's largest phone maker. It took Rovio just 50 games to make them number one hit. Uh, our overnight success story started 13 years ago. Uh, but for my personal entrepreneurial journey, I have to go back a few more years. In 1998, uh, I was just finishing high school, and um, like many other people at my age, I had no idea what I wanted to do, uh, other than go to university. And then when it came time to pick a profession or which field to go into, I had no idea. And I asked around where they have the best professors, and everybody told me that it's public administration. So I applied, I got in, and I started uh, studying there. Uh, but soon enough, it became clear to me that uh, they are training their government officials, and the first shock came sometime later when I was visiting the um, European Commission in Brussels, when I realized what a government official mm, in EU does the entire day. So, you know, I saw that they come to work at 9 o'clock every morning, then they will, um, you know, work on a whole big pile of folders. They were evaluating EU-funded projects. They go home 5 o'clock every evening, and every day is exactly the same. Uh, the biggest shock came to me even a bit more time later, when I did an internship at the Ministry in Estonia, and my working day was exactly similar to that. And then I realized that in my professional life, I actually want to do the exact opposite. I want to have a lot of uh, freedom, not only in terms of what to do, uh, not only in terms of when to work, but also, you know, I wanted to be able to work on something that would be meaningful for me. And uh, then I decided that uh, I want to you know, be an entrepreneur and work on my own things, even if it means that, that there is no salary or no, no other benefits. And the most interesting thing back then uh, was for us was what was happening to the mobile phones. I mean, this is the phone that my father had. But by the time, year 2000, the phones had uh, started to change. And how, how many of you remember this phone? I mean, it was amazing for us back then, because that was the phone that you could actually not only talk, not only text, but you could go to the internet with it. And there was this dial-up window. It took some time to connect. There were only four lines of uh, text on the screen. But it was amazing, you know, and we, for us, that was the coolest thing. And then we decided that we really want to give, get into the business of, of working on these phones and doing something cool for them. And then on the second year of university, we founded the company um, Mobi, from which Fortumo later became out of. And this is the trajectory of our uh, overnight success story. I mean, um, over here, we started the uh, first company, and then in 2007, we span out for Tuma from that company, and from then on, we've been growing a little bit every year, and, and faster more recently. So what does Fortumo do? Basically, we realized that in every single country in the world, there are way more people with mobile phones than there are people with credit cards, and especially so in emerging markets. In Brazil, there are 60 million uh, credit cards, 260 million mobile phones. In India, very limited amount of credit cards, very many mobile phones. So we realized that if we wanted to make payments for digital goods really universal, we really had to focus on mobile phones and not the traditional uh, banking instruments. And the second big part is uh, the user experience. Uh, this is the typical mm, first-time user experience on a credit card payments. When you want to pay for a digital subscription, 
You need to go to the other room, grab your wallet, take out your credit card, enter a 16-digit uh, number, enter your name, uh, expiry date, zip code, address, all those things. And many people just won't bother. They, they, they quit. Whereas with mobile payments, it's one-click experience, and it goes directly to your carrier bill. So you're done. So what it means is that we have realized when you're selling a digital good, uh, the better payment experience leads up to 10 times better conversion for mobile payments as compared to credit cards. And that's the reason why uh, the carrier billing is, has been so widely used, and that has enabled us as a company to grow. So currently, we started out in 2007 in seven countries. Mm, then we added um, Eastern European countries, then Western Europe, Latin America, North America, and now we have 80 countries, and we're focusing a lot on Southeast Asia, Middle East, and Africa. We have four offices in San Francisco, in Beijing, and in India, Mumbai. But the biggest office where all of our development is, where all of our, uh, most of our management is, is actually still here in Estonia. I mean, why? Why are we in Estonia? I think for us, Estonia is one of the best places in the world, uh, and the Nordic countries as a whole are one of the best places in the world to build companies. Uh, first of all, um, the first reason is that uh, we have um, such a small home market that whenever you want to create something, you have to think of the global market or some larger market in mind immediately. And because you do that, your products tend to be more universal right from the start. Whereas in you know, Silicon Valley, you might do some of the products that are only good for your small town, and you don't really see the wider picture. So we in the Nordics have this big advantage. Another good reason, I think, here are the people. We have people who have um, some big company experience, working, at, working with Nokia, Skype, many, many other companies but we still have this uh, startup mindset. Uh, people want to work on their startups or work at startups rather than in big companies, much more so than uh, in any other countries. And um, last week there was an article that mentioned that that's kind of a problem, that we are too entrepreneurial, we have too many startups working on too many meaningful things, uh, unmeaningful things. My view is that, that no, that's not a problem. I, even if you want to be Elon Musk and you want to you know, revolutionize space and electric cars, even Elon Musk started first uh, by doing a couple of quite uh, less relevant companies that he sold successfully. Then he did uh, PayPal, which he sold successfully, and only then he was taking up those world-changing ideas. So it's, I think it's not possible to immediately move from um, zero to a world-changing idea. You will fail. So the fact that we have so many startups, it's really good. And the last reason, I think, uh, why it's such a good to do companies here is the climate. I mean, if the weather is like this, like it has been over the past few weeks, then there is nothing else to do than stay inside and work on the next big uh, company. And we have a big advantage over you know, countries like Cyprus and Greece uh, who don't have that luxury. So on that optimistic note, I want to mm, end. If you want to learn more, then uh, I will be at the yellow stage uh, immediately after this presentation. And if you want to learn more how you can make money on emerging markets, then you can go to fortumo.com and um, sign up and be good to go. Thank you.